Moms who know do less so they can focus on what matters most, taking care of themselves, their families, and living their God-given purpose. Moms who know focus on the little things they can do that grow to have a huge impact. You are connecting with your family, your true self, and your God-given purpose. You are a mom who knows. Hello and welcome to the Moms Who Know podcast. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen, and today's episode is a recording I did a while back for the Ambitious Mom Summit. Now, I've never shared it here because it was really intended for an audience of business moms, but as I re-listened to it, I realized that it has application for everybody. I was interviewed about imposter syndrome, and what I really get into in this conversation with Stacy is the idea that imposter syndrome comes from this idea that we are not enough. It comes from an attack on who we are and on our self-worth. And so I think there's going to be takeaways for everyone from this episode, whether you're a business mom or not. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Stacy Walker. Hello, ladies. We are back for another segment of the Ambitious Mom Summit, where we're helping you reignite your dreams and monetize your gifts during the work that you love. And as you can see, we are not done yet. I have another amazing, ambitious mama here to help you in so many ways through her stories, her experiences, and her advice, you know, to help you design that incredible life that you love. So Chanel, hi and welcome, welcome to the Ambitious Mom Summit. I'm so glad you're here. Would you love, I would love for you to introduce yourself to the women that are watching and listening. Oh, yes. Thank you. First of all, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So a quick introduction. I live in Southern California with my husband and five kids. Um, The oldest is 16 and the first four I had in six years. And then we have a seven year gap before number five. So he was a little surprise bonus baby. Um, and that has been just so much fun uh, starting over as a, as a, I, I always say I'm a young old mom because I'm old, but I'm starting over with all the baby stuff again, but it's been really fun. He's now three. He just turned three last week. I have been podcasting for the last several years. I'm an author of um, one book on parenting and several children's books. I just, I love talking to moms because they're my people. I get what it's like. I'm in the trenches still doing, doing all the mom stuff. So yeah, that's a little about me. Oh, thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Chanel. And I I get it about, you know, having a a bonus baby. That was the same thing with my three-year-old. So, so mamas, I know some of y'all can identify with Chanel and just the, the experience of having Having a bonus baby. I love that. I love that. So ladies, Chanel is going to be sharing a very important topic that definitely needs to be discussed because there's so many women that feel as if they are alone, suffering in silence. And this can happen whether you're in business, this could happen in your families, this could happen amongst your friends and your community. And what I'm talking about is imposter syndrome. So Chanel, where would you like to to start with um, sharing about how you've been able to overcome imposter syndrome and stretch your comfort zone and still, you know, focus on your vision and that in the life that you want to create for yourself and your family? Where would you like to start? I think let's start with what is it? Because we we hear the phrase a lot, imposter syndrome. And I think we have a general idea. But what it means to me is these feelings of inadequacy. This feeling that even though you're doing the thing, you are not quite sure if you're up to the task. You're not quite sure if like if they really knew that this was me, would I be able to do this? And I think one way that as moms, we can relate to this and tell me, Stacey, if this happened for you, when, you know, during pregnancy, you know, there's this baby growing inside of you, but you go to the hospital and you have your baby and then you're there. And then when it's time to leave, they hand you your baby and you're thinking, (laughs) me, like, I'm going to take that. You trust me to take this baby. And there's this almost this feeling of 
of imposter syndrome yeah. as a mom. Like, wait, you know, I mean, yeah, I grew this baby, but you're still going to send me <laughs> home. And I think as moms, most of us feel that way. Yes, you're not. I, I did. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's pretty common, even though intellectually we know, okay, you know, there's this baby coming. There's always this moment. And I've had five kids and every time like, whoa, now, now I really have this baby. Now I'm going to do the thing. Yeah. Uh, and so that feeling translates in many areas of our life. So yes, it's as it's in our motherhood, it's in our business, it's in our marriages, it's in our relationships. It's in all these things, this feeling of, am I really enough? It, it mm. centers on enoughness. Another place that I, another thing I like to help to define it a little bit more mm. is this self-esteem versus self-worth. So what mm. I mean by that is this, some people think, well, I've got good self-esteem because I, I do these things. You know, I, I have a business for some of us, or I've done, I have these accomplishments. I was good at sports in high school. I have good self-esteem. And they would never identify with the idea of having low self-esteem. You know, some people just, that's, that's not it. But when it comes to self-worth, that's different. And maybe their self-worth is a little low. And so we try to prove how good we are at things by building our self-esteem. But you can't increase your self-worth by building your self-esteem. So as we build our self-esteem and we have all these accomplishments, sometimes we can still have this imposter syndrome because our worth is low. And I think then what we have to realize is, okay, my worth is actually unchanging. There's nothing I can do or have to do or have to prove to increase my worth. It's inherent. I have that worth by virtue of being here on this earth right now. I am, we are all, there's not one person, a homeless person on the street absolutely has worth, absolutely has value. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with accomplishments. We all have worth. When we realize that, that's really the heart of this issue. That's what it comes down to is knowing our worth, believing in our worth. And so I have some things that can kind of help us with that. But when we're talking about imposter syndrome, that's what we're really talking about. That's the heart of this issue. Mm, Chanel, thank you so much for defining what imposter syndrome is. And it comes down to self-worth because yes, I, I, I've met plenty of women that have you know, great self-esteem, you know, it, yeah. high levels, like it is just like through the roof, but the self-worth is definitely a different conversation. So thank you for shedding light on that because I'm pretty sure a lot of the women had a light bulb moment. So I appreciate that. So what else do you have for us? Okay. Well, so let's talk about now that we know kind of what that is, let's talk about some ways to get over it. And I think the very first thing to know is you're never going to be over it. You're never going to totally conquer this. This is not one of those things that you're going to check off your list. Oh, I conquered that. I'm done with that one. You know, even as I was preparing for our conversation today, this is honestly a little bit out of my wheelhouse. Now I speak a lot. I speak, um, you know, I have a podcast, like I said, I speak on summits, I speak on, you know, stages, I, I go and speak. However, I very rarely speak about business. Am I a business mom? Yes, I absolutely am. But I was thinking, oh my gosh, can I, re can I speak to this? You know, it, it came up for me, even just having this conversation, which is ironic, but uh, that's beside the point, right? So it's going to come up again. So the first thing that I would say is this, recognize your thoughts. One thing that helps me to recognize my thoughts is always to write them down. I'm a big fan of journaling because what happens when we don't write them down, our thoughts are kind of swirling around in our mind and we can't quite grasp a hold of them. They're just up there swirling and they're making us feel anxious and scared, but we can kind of trap them on paper. And when we write them down and when we see our thoughts, then they don't have quite as much power over us. We can say, oh, I recognize that that is uh, imposter syndrome. I recognize that that's just something destroying my worth. You can't destroy my worth. It's here. It's not going anywhere. Um, one thing th that kind of this made me think of is we've taught our children when they're on the computer, 
and you know are on their device, if something, an inappropriate picture comes up, four of my kids are boys, so we talk about this a lot. We want to keep them safe online. If an inappropriate picture comes up, we've taught them to label it, to say out loud, that's pornography, turn it off and walk away. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because that's what we want to do. The reason we teach them to do that is it takes away the power. It takes away the power of what they're seeing on the screen. When we label our thoughts and we say, that is an attack on my self-worth, well, it's like a light bulb for us. Oh, that's attacking my self-worth. Then we realize my self-worth is inherent. It doesn't matter. You can throw all those arrows. You can attack it as much as you want to, but it's not going anywhere. It just takes that first step of us recognizing our thoughts. So that's the first one, recognize your thoughts. The second one is um, to bridge, do something I call making a, creating a bridge thought. So what that means is once you write down your thoughts and you, you write down, I'm not good enough, or I probably can't do this anyway, or who am I to go in front of these people? Who really wants to hear from me? I'm just a mom. I'm just a whatever, right? Once we recognize those, we want to create a bridge thought. So what that means is those thoughts are, are in our mind already, but they're not necessarily helpful or true. So we want to create a thought that is both helpful and true. Now, that bridge is a way to get us there because what we can't do is this. If we're thinking, I am no good at public speaking or whatever it may be. And then we try to change our thought to, I'm amazing at public speaking. Well, if we're not, the first thing our brain does is goes, shoo, I don't believe that. No, it's just not true. So what we want to do is create this bridge that is both helpful and true. So we can say something in our mind like, I am practicing at public speaking. And then as soon as that thought comes up, you're no good at public speaking. Nope. I am practicing at public speaking. It's a bridge to get us to where we want to go. Our brain can believe it. Like, yeah, that's true. I believe that. And it's helping us. So that, that combination really can help us. And that helps us in the moment. Right when those thoughts come up, it helps us to change it. As soon as we hear that thought, whatever it is for us in our mind, we take a step on that bridge to get us where we want to go. Um, our brains are kind of like, I've heard them described like a Google search. When you type something in, uh, your brain immediately looks for evidence to prove that it's true. So we need to be really careful what we're thinking. If we're thinking, I'm no good at this, our brain is going to Google that up and pull up all this evidence that you're not good at that. But if we can create these more helpful thoughts, I'm practicing at public speaking. Oh, all these, all these search, uh, 1.2 million results from your Google search come up to prove that yes, you are practicing, you are getting better. And then that's really helpful for us as we realize, okay, I am making progress. I'm doing what I need to do. So yeah. All right. So the next one be vulnerable. Now this really helps us with imposter syndrome because part of what imposter syndrome is, and we've talked about, you know, this lack of worth. Part of what's going on here is shame. And we're feeling like if anyone knew what's deep inside, if anyone knew the real me, if anyone knew that I've never taken care of a baby before, they wouldn't give me a baby, right? <laughs> this kind of idea, it's it's shame. When we're vulnerable and we share that, we share what's going on. Shame cannot live with vulnerability, right? As soon as we share it, it takes that shame away. It takes that fear away. And now we're able to come out of hiding, come out of that dark place into the light. And when there's light, then we don't have to worry about being perfect. We can give ourselves a little bit of grace, give ourselves a little forgiveness, move on from our mistakes. And that's a powerful, powerful thing when we're able to be vulnerable. And I would also say, you know, be vulnerable with our friends and our family. Maybe if we're in business, it, it's even a bigger audience. We're being vulnerable, you know, in a bigger space, but it's also being vulnerable with ourselves and allowing ourselves to see, you know what? I am scared. This is scary for me. This is new, but I'm moving forward anyway. And instead of trying to shove that down, we need to let that out. And that can be hard to do. Yes. Yes. I, I, 
I can definitely identify with that. Oh my goodness, Chanel, these <laughs> three practices are absolutely amazing ladies. I hope you've been writing, writing everything down because Chanel has uh, touched upon like practical ways, right? I mean, that, that's what we want is practical ways that we can do when this pops up. And it's nothing, it's not rocket science. This is like easy stuff. And I love it. I love the simple. So, so I, I love like the couple more. If oh, you want me to keep yeah. Going, yes, so. yes, okay. please do. Yes, I love yes. it. Just two other thoughts on this, on things that we can do. Okay. So the next one is to seek lessons everywhere to learn from our fail failures. And I worked with a business coach that really instilled this in me. And this is even how I do my sharing on social media. If you follow me on social media, you'll see how I do this. So what this looks like for me is in my, in your everyday life, in my everyday life, there are lessons for us all around. I'll share one that happened recently. My three-year-old the other day, went and he said he was tired and he went and put himself down for a nap. Now you have a three-year-old. Oh, that's gold, right? That's amazing. That doesn't, that doesn't happen. What? And, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow, this is awesome. He just decided he was tired and put himself down. Then about an hour later, he usually naps for at least two hours. He said he got up and he went potty and I thought, darn it. You know, so much for that short nap. Then he said, I'm still tired. I'm going back to bed. And he went back to bed for another hour with a potty break in between. So where, what I do here with this is I write down what happened. Here's what happened. My son went to the bathroom and he went back to bed and he knew he was tired. What is the lesson for me? And then I look at it in different areas of my life. So what's the lesson? How can I apply this to my body? Well, he was listening to his body. He's only three, but he was recognizing those signals from his body. How can I better listen to my body? You know, how can I learn what, what is my body trying to teach me? What do I need to eat? What do I need to move? Paying attention to that in my business. How often am I not taking the time to see what I really need and do that self care? And I go on through different categories of my life and apply it. Now, that's a, a cute little example, but we can also do that with failure. When we fail, all of our life experiences have things to teach us. And imposter syndrome tells us only we can only live up here. We can only be on this, in, this perfect, you know, impenetrable place. But when we allow ourselves to learn from our mistakes, and, and we, we hear that a lot, right? Fail forward, learn from failures. Well, this is a way for me that I've internalized that. Okay, this is what happened. Here's what I'm actually taking from it, taking it next step next level. So that's been really helpful for me. And the other, the other piece of that is we have a learning mindset, not a performance mindset. So it's not about how I appear to everyone else. It's about what am I taking from this? What am I learning? And then in, in, you know, business, maybe in our platform, we are then teaching that to others. Mm -hmm. And the last one, this idea comes from James Clear, who's a, ha a habits expert. Habits is one of my, one of my things I love to teach people on. He talks about the idea idea that we need to change on the inside first. A lot of times, so he draws this great diagram. So imagine a target in the center is identity and then outcome and then processes. A lot of times what we do is we change our process or I said that backwards outcomes on the outside prop processes in the middle. A lot of times we change our process to change our outcome. So if we want to lose 20 pounds, we decide, okay, I'm going to change what I'm going to eat and then I'm going to lose weight but we forgot to change our identity. We forgot to change who we are. When we start with that piece, when we start with, I am the kind of person who does these things, we can quash that idea of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So for me, I am a speaker. I am a businesswoman. I am a mom. When I believe that, when I internalize it, it becomes part of who I am. And then the processes and the outcome just naturally flow instead of, you know, this disconnect, this belief like, oh, I'm doing this thing. It's like if you lose the weight and how many people does this happen to? You lose weight, you change your process. And so you lose weight, you change the outcome but you're still fat on the inside, right? You never became, I am a person who eats right. I am a person who takes care of her body. If you didn't become that, 
you'll come right back to what you were before. So we've got to change our identity. So those are my, uh, my five tips. I love them. Love them. Thank you so much. I mean, this is something that I think is probably one of the best segments. And this is why, (laughs) and this is why I'm sharing because you've shared five and I know that each and every woman can relate to at least one of those, you know, especially the examples that you shared. So thank you so much for, you know, your love, your wisdom, your leadership, and also your co-creation, you know, in this event and helping the women know that, you know, basically imposter syndrome is just a myth. I I always call it a lie. Uh, And there are some things that we can do to lessen that that negative dialogue. And Chanel just gave you five great ways. So thank you so much, Chanel. So we have time to um, talk about your resource. And then before we do, I want to ask you a question before we close out. So what would you like to share with the, with the ladies? Yes. So I am sharing, this is something that I put together. It's a done for you morning routine. I love to start off the morning with time for myself. And I recommend that all my people do the same. Get up before your kids. Now, before you freak out, this morning routine is 10 minutes and it's that way intentionally because we also need our sleep, right? Yes. So 10 minutes before your kids, it has a seven minute yoga video. I didn't mention in my bio that I'm also a yoga instructor. It has a one minute meditation and it has journaling prompts. Take that time, that quiet space in your mind allows you to feed your mind these thoughts that we've talked about today. Writing them down allows you to see your thoughts. It all ties together, but you have to make it a habit. You have to make it a practice. And so a daily morning routine will do that for you. Ooh, I love that. Ladies, um, I wouldn't sit on this because 10 minutes is doable. I mean, just set your alarm clock a little bit earlier. And I and I agree with you. We, we have to take care of ourselves first. We can't hit the ground running. Um, otherwise, the day controls us. And yes. we don't want that, you know, especially with the dreams that we're building. So thank you, Chanel, for that generous gift. Ladies, the button to access Chanel's gift is right below us. Also, her, her website, uh, her social media links to connect with her. I encourage you to connect with her because not only did she provide some amazing content today, but she is here to support you. She is here to help you realize your vision, whatever that is for your business in your life. And so get to it because this is an opportunity that's just waiting for you. You just need to go through the door. So Chanel, before we close out, I would love for you to um, share some words of wisdom for the, for the women, or I should say woman, this is what I should say, woman who is definitely inspired by you. She's learned much from you today. However, she's still in this place of uh, feeling a little bit paralyzed, right? She's not too sure if she can even really make this reality. What would you say to her? I would say this. I think that everyone who has done anything on this earth has been there, has felt that same way. There are so many times as I've moved forward in my business that I think, can I do this? Can I take this next step? And it's never clear. You're never just going to see this bright pathway ahead of you, know exactly what to do. You're going to see just enough light that you can take a couple steps forward. So take those steps. And it's when you are moving that you're going to get the next bit of light to move the next steps. And you just keep going and you keep going and you have it in you to do. We all are needed. I feel like there is just this rising up of women right now. And it's because we are needed in this world. What you have is needed with the world. So don't be selfish by keeping it in because that's what it is. If your fear keeps it in, you are depriving me and all of us from hearing those things that you have to share. And we absolutely need you. Mm, Thank you. So there you have it, ladies. What a beautiful closing to this amazing segment. Thank you again, Chanel, for for being a part of this event. Ladies, don't forget, before you go to the next segment, be sure to access Chanel's resource. I'm going to access that resource. I love to do yoga. And 
don't forget to connect with her on social media. She has amazing content on Instagram. Um, she has a podcast, so you can literally plug her into your ears. So thank you, Chanel. We are closing out and then we'll be on to our next segment. It's been so good having you here. Thank you, Stacy. I hope you guys learned some things and found some takeaways for yourself. And now I want to know what one little thing are you going to do differently or think about differently because of what you've heard. Let me know on Instagram or Facebook at Moms Who Know Podcast. And if you like this episode, please share it with a friend. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time on Moms Who Know. <laughs>